Hello, so welcome to our next uh, lecture on cloud computing. T uh, today we will continue some of our discussion on uh, uh, on cloud architecture and specially see some aspects of uh, cloud architecture means uh, cloud like one of the aspects is uh, virtualization. Right? So, as uh, if we if we look at remember that are their lectures we are discussing on different type of uh, service models and also we have different type of deployment models in cloud namely public, private, hybrid and uh, community cloud. Different aspects and all, all sort of uh, services can be hosted in different type of deployment models. Right? So, in case of a public cloud uh, the as the name suggests it is available for public at large. So, it is it is uh, you, uh, anyone can purchase that and it is somewhat omnipresent across the internet. Right? Some of the very popular examples are uh, Google App Engine, Microsoft Azure, uh, IBM Cloud, Amazon EC2 and many others, right? many many others clouds are there. Right? So, what happened that uh, we have this public cloud and enterprise or individual can subscribe this public cloud, right? subscribe this public cloud over the internet and can have that uh, its services over this. So, the cloud infrastructure is provisioned for open use by general public uh, organization, enterprises and anyone who can pay and use the things. There are definitely some uh, legal policy issues which need to be conformed to. So, it may be owned, managed and operated by a business, academics, government organization or some combination of them. Right? It exists in the premise of, of the cloud provider. So, typically the physically the public cloud is at the CSP's premise or premises. Right? So, that means, uh, that means uh, whatever the computing infrastructure, storage infrastructure and other type of things are there, those are residing in the CSP's uh, or the cloud provider's premises, not at the uh, private or, or not at the user's premises. So, that is one, one aspect of the thing. And uh, in public in public setting, providers computing and storage resources are potentially large, right? So it, it is serving to all. Communication links can be assumed to be implemented over public internet services, and the cloud service serves a diverse pool of clients. And maybe out of them, so not all faithful clients. There can be some attackers, hackers, etc., etc. So, it is it is open to anybody who can subscribe a typically can have a service provider and you can uh, there can be different type of users at the things. Right? So, what are the typical features workload locations are hidden from the client one, one of the clients that is one of the major thing like you do not know where the where your virtual machine is you do not know where the where you actually the data is residing which server which location and with whom it is residing. So, it is it is all are hidden. So, as far as as if we if you are not very stringent on the legal and policy matter about the security and other aspects, though it is fine that you do not care so long your services are there. There are risk for multi tenancy that means, your uh, logically or or it may be uh, theoretically always possible that your computing your storage where it is residing somebody else's things are there. Now, if it is your somebody uh, so with some organization or some person who is who is not very faithful or who are not very comfortable, so that two things to some to different user can reside uh, can work on the same things. So, in other sense there is a risk there is this what we say multi tenancy and there are risk of multi tenancy because I I do not know that where things are there whether there the, whether there is an underlining channel to access my data services and other type of things. So, there is a risk of uh, multi tenancy. So, single machine can be shared by workloads by any combination of service subscriber. Subscriber workload may be co resident with the workload of the computer or adversaries right introduce in uh, so it introduce both reliability and security risk. So, organization considering use of on site public cloud should consider network dependency. Right. So, whenever suppose IIT Kharagpur thinks that all is uh, all is uh, or some of his labs will be running on public cloud. So, that so that uh, our overall maintaining and etcetera 
reduces cost of maintenance or overall load on maintenance etcetera reduces. Now, the one first dependency is the network. So, it will be always available the network connectivity should be always available up to MR. So, that is one dependency there are limited visibility and control over the data regarding the security. So, I have as we are mentioning that I have limited visibility of the uh, data, I do not know where the data is and how it is uh, secured. Only thing what I have is a some sort of a SLA or some sort of a MOU between the provider and uh, provider and me that this data is secured and so and so forth. So, there is a issue of elasticity or illusion of unlimited resource availability right. So, uh, this is when we use public clouds this is pretty fine, because I theoretically I have infinite amount of elasticity like if I have I if I need more computing power it will be provisioned, if I want more other storage things it will be provisioned, so, when I do not require I uh, release it or deprovision it. So, those things are feasible. So, theoretically infinite uh, scaling up scaling down is possible. Another important thing is the low upfront cost to mitigate uh, migrate into the cl cloud right. So, if you want to make a private cloud of your own then you have to purchase the thing make provision where it will be housed install software and etcetera run it test it there are issues of maintenance so and so. Here the upfront there is no there is very low upfront cost you pay and use it restrictive default service manage service level agreement. So, there is a now whenever we purchase something there is a somewhere or other we need to conform to the uh, uh, that standard or what we say quote unquote restrictive service level agreements between the provider and the consumer. So, most of the cases we need to follow the terms and condition uh, provided the provide uh, uh, like uh, whatever is given by the provider, unless you do for a large scale deployment where you negotiate at a special rate with special SLA and type of things right. But normally for a small institution public at large we need to conform to the whatever is being provided. So, totally other uh, means the other aspects of the from the public is the private. So, you have your own cloud and you have all your resources which can be uh, working on it right. So, the cloud infrastructure is provisioned for exclusive use of a single organization comprising of multiple consumers or business units like a same organization say IIT KGP private cloud may catering all the things which is in the IIT department section etcetera may be owned managed and operated by the organization or it can be outsourced by a third party managing your resources out here, but it is in your premises under your jurisdiction under your network control and type of things and it may exist on or off premises also right. So, that there are usually on premises or I can say I have a private things or uh, what we say outsource private cloud uh, where I can have the off premises, but nevertheless it is jurisdiction or my policy stipulated rules uh, or the organization rules which prevail. So, there are some of the open source and other public cloud one is that eucalyptus pretty popular there are open stack, Ubuntu enterprise cloud, Amazon VPC virtual private cloud, VMware cloud infrastructure suite, uh, Microsoft ECI data centers and so on and so forth. So, there are several things which gives private cloud uh, into the thing. So, contrary to popular belief private cloud may exist off premises and can be managed by third party. So, I, I uh, not only means uh, take the responsibility or uh, I, I basically I will maintain the control over the whole thing, but I basically may uh, off premise or I install the with the help of a third party to a separate thing also right. Thus two private cloud scenarios one is on site private cloud which is which is the de facto or which is immediately come to which uh, comes to our mind when you are talking about anything which is private applies to private clouds implemented as a customer's premises. Another is the outsource private cloud like I have a private chunk of the things which is outside outsource out of my premises, but nevertheless it is private to me right. So, applies to private cloud where the server side is outsourced to the hosting company wherever it is uh, it is there. So, in case of on site private cloud the security perimeter extends around both the subscriber on site resources and private cloud resources. So, the your security perimeter or your uh, legal control is basically have uh, 
the encompass the private cloud right. Security perimeter does not guarantee control over private cloud resources, but the subscriber can exercise control over the other resources over the resources like. So, that it 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 is uh, in case of uh, on site like whatever the private cloud it is there, I can have a overall control over the whole resources of the private cloud. So, there are some issues characteristics pros and cons of the maintaining on site private cloud. One is the network dependency on site private right subscriber. So, it is dependency on the on your internal network should be here subscriber still needs a IT skill I, I my organization is maintaining my own cloud or the organization maintaining own cloud. So, there should be some sort of a skill to maintain that workload location are hidden from the client. Uh, even if my clients are different, different my sub units that also this is hidden from the client like even if it is within the premises or uh, on site private cloud that actual infrastructure is in from the cloud where client is my own organization things or, or my own clients are on the other side. Risks from multi tenancy again the same issues of within things also come into play data import export and performance limitation there can be issues of data import export because there are lot of data which will be going out and going down. So, the like on demand bulk data import export is limited on on site private clouds network cap capacity or real time critical processing may be problematic because of network limitation. Potentially strong security from external threats usually if it is a private within your network boundary all your network other features come into play like as I was mentioning in some of my in one of my earlier uh, lecture that IIT Kharagpur has has uh, installed or has developed a private cloud for his research purpose what is Megamala, but it is within my network premise. So, what all whatever the network security parameters uh, or features are there for IIT Kharagpur is also applied for this infrastructure. So, what is what happens that uh, it has a potentially strong security features significant to high upfront cost to migrate into the cloud. So, that is another issue right whenever you have a private cloud. So, there is a significant cost in installing maintaining and there is maybe a significant cost in migrating the whole thing into the private cloud your own right. There is a limited resources all uh, if you have your thing that anything you want to augment you need to purchase install not only that you need to need to properly interoperate with the existing things. Right. So, in doing so you have a uh, at times you have a limited resources like uh, suddenly I can go up or down on the resources. So, as on site private cloud any specific time has a fixed computing and storage capacity that can be sized to corresponding correspond to the anticipated workloads and cost. So, what we do whenever I, I install a private cloud. So, I, I have a estimate of the things like uh, storage computing etcetera and then keep some provision like if it is a buying that the staff at x amount I or I install 1.5 amount, but uh, that is the thing that I am limited to that x uh, 1.5 x amount of the thing. So, there is another variant of the things I keep this as private, but I uh, outsource it. So, that maintaining installing etcetera I do not uh, means organization do not take care, but it is outsourcing. So, outsource private cloud has two security perimeters one implemented by the cloud subscriber whoever is there on the right and the implemented by the provider. So, one this is a perimeter. So, what is happening it has a some sort of a channel which which connects this to this private cloud which is outsourced in some other premises right or maybe a subset of a cloud service provider right. So, I have a channel which hooks into the things, but the whole staff at that end is a private to me right. So, uh, the security of data and processing conducted on the outside private cloud depends on the strength and availability of both security parameters and of, of the protected communication. So, what we require that my infrastructure to be secured at the extent things another the channel where by the network channel or the net network communication link which I talk uh, which over which I communicate or over which my organization communicate with the cloud should be secured in a in a up to a particular level at up to a particular level expected level. So, there are 
again some consideration pros cons of using outsource private cloud one is network dependency uh, that again i am dependent on how things will be connected workload location are hidden from the client again those type of issue risk from multi tenancy the where i am hosting my private cloud other people may be hosting also the private cloud so data import export and performance limitations same thing exist potentially strong security from external threat because of you have still have a private uh, things it is not fully public and not all people are jumping on your cloud but nevertheless you are maybe sharing some infrastructure maybe more threat at the much more uh, lower level at the is level and so on but at a higher level you are not uh, allowing anybody to enter into the things modest to significant upfront cost to mitigate cloud so those are same as whatever we are having at the things and most of the cases you need to negotiate in terms of the sla with the provider who is providing your or the third party who is providing you this cloud extensive resource availability is maybe an advantage because this is not limited i am taking a chunk so i request for increase it may it is very much possible to increase at the other end provided uh, the provider is not out of resources usually they have lot of uh, resource at their backbone the so one side is private one side is public another typical type of cloud is hype community cloud right so it basically tries to as we have discussed it basically tries to serve a particular community uh, per se it is usually can operate in a public or private both and it basically catered to a particular community which has a some somewhat same domain of operation or same focus of of uh, interoperability right so cloud infrastructure is provisioned for exclusive use of a specific community of consumer from organization that are shared concern that means they have a like minded concern that is there can be same mission security requirement policy compliance consideration etc it may be owned managed operated by one or more organization in the community so a third party or some combination of that it may exist on or off premises okay so it can be on premises off premises there are several uh, uh, community cloud and uh, which are being provided by different service provider so there are there can be one thing that community uh, like there are several abc organization there are xyz organization and there can they can form different set of combination like abc xyz can be one community a with xy can be another community and so and so forth so there is possibility of uh, bringing things together there is also possibility that a, a community can be can be uh, existing at some point of time at the some other point of time it may not be existing i may be a organization can be more than one community uh, of the things like uh, like our day to day life i may be a part of my uh, office group also i am part of my uh, say residential uh, community right so there can be different uh, policies and etc things are there and but it is the pri the primary objective is that there are like uh, or same type of concern or same type of workflow it may so happen that this community uh, making them in a single community will help in productivity right so uh, there are again lot of uh, means uh, characteristics pros and cons etc the participant the participant organization are connected via links between the boundary controllers and allow access through their security parameters like whatever the uh, firewall policies or that type of boundary policies are there access policy of a community cloud may be pretty complex because you can have number of community so what way what way access which you don't access whether there is a leakage of information i get some information from one community pass it to the other community so this need to be properly restricted so policy specification techniques like role based access control attribute based access control are there like based on my role i access some data right and like other form of uh, deployment uh, models here also we have network dependency subscriber still need some it skills because you need to it need to maintain with uh, different community things workload location are hidden from the client again data import export performance limitations there are issues on that like how between the community uh, things etc whether the data or within the community when multiple 
subscriber come in to play that how things will be there and number of cases these communities can be loosely coupled. So, that things becomes more critical to manage potentially strong security from the external thing because still you are in the one community. So, that you have a base better resistance to the external threats uh, based on your community policies along with your own policy. High variable upfront cost to migrate to the cloud. So, that is a as as we have seen in case of a truly private cloud there is a high variable upfront cost to the migrate of the migration to the cloud because it is not publicly available. So, you need to create the things and there can be different sort of uh, things like there are three organizations forming a community with a some boundary controller where with a private subscriber and those issues come into play. Community cloud can be on the premises or we can uh, the community cloud can be uh, out of means uh, premises that means, uh, the community cloud can be uh, outsourced as we have seen that uh, in case of a private cloud. So, once we outsource the network dependency workload lotus location he are not known or hidden from the clients, risk from multi tenancy, data import export and performance limitation issues this will come into play potentially strong security from external threats as we have mentioned that is still you are on the community modest to significant upfront cost. Uh, if it is outsourced a lot of loads are uh, taken up by the outsourcing organization. So, there is a there is a chance that uh, overall loading may be a uh, overall uh, upfront cost will be much less than if you are maintaining in premises and theoretically if you are outsourcing extensive resource uh, availability are possible. So, uh, apart from uh, this as we can theoretically see or practically see that I can have a cloud which is combination of all those things right. So, I can have private public community things especially with the public uh, private cloud I can have a cloud which is combination of such uh, more than one type of deployment models. The cloud infrastructure is a composition of two more distinct cloud infrastructure private community or public. So, I have three type of things and then I have I, I want to realize a cloud which has a combination of uh, these three things. Why this is important first of all it is all all depends that what sort of uh, uses pattern I am having like some of the uses pattern what I am having is more critical or more uh, vulnerable to security threats that I want to keep as a more private right. I do not want to I have a appropriate network uh, boundary or network perimeter security to be implemented on the things. There are some of the resources which may not be I do not I may not want those to be so much secure or I do not care about all those security of the all those things and that can be made some of the things pub public. Like if I say if there are practices practice sessions for uh, say computing labs for students. So, the level of security is much less than the uh, when I am keeping say student records or students examination things etcetera right. So, though same type of operations may be there, but one I could have uh, gone away with and, and outsource this and gone to the public cloud to do it right. And whereas, the other one uh, even it is economical I want to keep those as my private uh, things. Now, I, I can have a private public combinations right and number of cases what sometimes it happens that you do something with the private and you require some resources to be provisioned due to sudden increase of the things. Then suddenly in a private cloud increasing the resource provisioning or purchasing etcetera is a long process. So, you purchase the thing on a public cloud for a from a for a short period of time. So, long your processes are in place and then goes to the things. So, the infrastructure community that remains unique entity, but are bounded together in a standardized or proprietary technology enables data and application to be portable this is important. So, portability not only with respect to data whenever I have this private public community all together or a combination of two or more together then the, the issue of interoperative will come, come into play like the data which is working fine here when I take some application from the other whether we still work at the things. So, the both data 
and at times the applications suppose your applications were running on a private cloud with some resources. Now, you provision a VM which basically goes to the public domain. Now, the type of applications whether the application wants uh, need to be resized or there are portability issues of the applications need to be looked into. So, exam there are examples of hybrid cloud some of the popular windows azure capable of hybrid cloud VM where V cloud there are capability of hybrid cloud and as I am mentioning that there are several uh, other uh, providers which, which helps us in pro which provide this type of things. So, the hybrid cloud is composed of two or more private public etcetera they have a significant variation in performance reliability security property depending upon the type of cloud chosen to build the hybrid right. If it is a if it is a community cloud or public and etcetera it will there will be difference in the performance different in the security features etcetera. So, a hybrid cloud can be extremely complex that is one one of the major things like suppose your uh, uh, suppose your uh, a, a particular application is going on and it to need to run over over a combination of public and private cloud then the overall uh, underlining architecture may be very complex so that your application runs seamlessly over the things so at times this private clouds can be extremely complex. A hybrid cloud may change over time with constituent clouds joining or leaving that is another 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 big factor. So, what we are what we are saying that uh, it may so happen that you build a hybrid cloud with your own private cloud and two other public clouds right. So, now what uh, now it may so change that some of the public cloud may go may wants to disconnect based based on your terms and conditions and your subscription ends they do not want to again resubscribe and they have a different pricing model even some of the thing may go red right they the organization the cloud may not be there. So, in that case your you need to there can be joining leaving and uh, joining of new things or sometimes you may require more resources. So, you add some more uh, public or community cloud into the things. All this becomes extremely complex phenomena to handle right. So, that means over time uh, the constituent clouds may leave or join and making the whole process pretty complex right. So, now uh, what should I choose right what should my should be my deployment model is another uh, big question right it all it totally depends on on your requirement like if I am a small organization or individual my public cloud may be a good solution. So, long my business is not going upfront on the something which compels me to go to the to a own private cloud. There are other constant like I, I do business for somebody else right I, I have some other subscriber base or client base. Now, this client may be in turn looking for a things like suppose I have a storage provider data storage provider. Now, I may either I have a all these storages on my premises or I outsource these resources or provision these resources from other other public clouds. Now, it may be so happened that the, the my clients which may be something mission critical clients like may be a financial sector or defense sector they want that no, no, no it, it cannot happen you need to have your own thing. So, it all depends that how what should be my way of looking at it. Right. I can have a combination as we are talking about hybrid I can have a combination of private public and so forth based on my requirement or whether I can classify my application into different things my data my applications into different categories and then I say that this bunch can go to the private this bunch can go to the public this can go to, go to the community and type of things. So, managing all those things is a another big challenge or uh, for the organization uh, or institution to handle that. So, uh, with this we'll, we will close this lecture and uh, we will continue our lecture on uh, other aspects of comp uh, cloud computing uh, in the subsequent uh, talks. Thank you.